Hey Siri, release my shoes. Okay, done. Your shoes are unlaced. Oh, snap! Yo! Ha ha! Milk episode. YouTube, what is good? It's your boy Belt Episode coming back with another sneaker review, and this one is going to be a classic, I promise you. You've seen in the first portion of the video what I did and what the whole adapt system, how it works. Uh, most importantly, if you have an Apple-based phone, the possibilities are endless. And I'm not just going to show you the Nike Adapt Jordan 11 shoes that I have behind me in terms of a review. I'm going to show you the whole process from start to finish, the things you can, the things you cannot do. Um, and I'm going to put a, a importance or... I'm going to put emphasis on the things you're not supposed to do. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I ran into a problem setting up a Nike Adapt Basketball 2.0s, which is these shoes right here. So this is nothing new to me. It's the Nike Adapt setup. It's pretty much the same as any other process. It's just the difference is this features a Jordan 11, so it's a different silhouette. Um, and it's the first of its kind on a Jordan shoe. I don't think personally that this is going to be on a Jordan 1, a Jordan 3. I think just because the fact that it's the 25th anniversary, they wanted to make this shoe unique. So with that said and done, I'm going to put these bad boys to the side right here. Um, I actually do have the Nike Basketball 1.0s on my foot right now. That's the example that you saw in my first video. So I'm going to actually take this off <laughs> because this is a two-year two-year-old shoe uh, and I like the fact that Nike decided to use the Nike Adapt software and make it usable for older Nike Adapt systems so we're going to go over that too because this Nike Adapt app features so many different changes from the time that it was first created especially these Nike Adapt basketball 1.0s the 2.0s and again now the Jordan 11 um, Adapt so with that said and done let's get into the shoe because there's so many different videos i'm going to do this differently than i normally do it because i want people to see that experience from start to finish so we're going to talk briefly about the shoe let me just open this up <laughs> hopefully nothing falls out but this is not my first go again opening these 11 adapts at least i should say that so i'm excited man i'm really excited because not a lot of people have this shoe this is not a shoe that a lot of people are going to be able to replicate in terms of fakes because it involves more than just a shoe and materials. Now you have to deal with the shoe, the material, and the technology. Um, and I'm going to show you a picture later on during the review that shows you that the tags, that the type of tags that they have inside the shoe that features a unique FCC code. So the Federal Communication, I think, commissions. You don't want <laughs> anything to do with that. Um, in terms of the people making fakes for fake breads and stuff like that, the Jordan 11 adapts with is not a shoe you want to replicate. And I'll explain why later. So let's open this bad boy up. And there's a reason why I have the box. This is the original box for the Nike Adapt Basketball 2.0s. Let me put this right here. And I see people opening a box and think it's, it's like the first thing or the best thing since sliced bread, but I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen Seth Fowler open it up and he knows what time it is <laughs> because he did this already and he went over it. He went over this shoe not too long ago, earlier last year. I think it was February. So this is the box. And the reason why I'm bringing it out to show you guys, let me just put this down right here. The boxes are pretty much similar. This is the Nike Adapt Basketball 2.0 box, right? You can see right there, version 2.0. This is the year 2020. Um, this is 2.0 because, again, Nike Adapt Basketball 1.0 released the year before. Uh, in this case, you see the Nike swoosh on that box. In this box, you see the Air Jordan Adapt version 1.0 year 2020. So the reason why I say I don't believe that this Nike Adapt system will be on a Jordan 3 or 4 or 1. It's because the 25th anniversary is supposed to commemorate what Tinker Hatfield had in mind or envisioned a Jordan 11 to be, right? 
the Jordan going up the I stage, and we saw that with the um, Jordan 11 Jubilees or the 25th anniversary, where you see that Jordan lettering going up and down the I stage on both sides. In this case, this is the other version that he wanted, which was a self lacing system. And that's what you have with the Nike Adapts. Now, of course, it's not, it's not exactly the way he envisioned it in terms of how it would be done, but it's kind of a rendition or a special rendition of what he envisioned the Nike Jordan 11s to be. And I think the reason why they did not want, as I'm opening this up, they did not want this shoe to look like a bread or a Concord. Oh, man. I can't wait to see this. Um, just because it has to you be unique. That colorway, the, the, the people don't like it, but that colorway has to look unique because it's the first time it's ever done, uh, it's ever been done, and then it has to look unique because you want to be able to identify, look at it, and say, that's the Adapt Jordan 11s, not the Jordan 11 brand with Adapt system, if that makes sense. So here's the box right here, and you can see it does feature one two three four on the top right here and the reason why because these are the steps that are necessary to set it up again i'm going to show you guys step by step on how to do that the first one is just basically showing the qr code and once you hold your computer um your cell phone whatever it is and for those that have apple users you can say well i can't say it right now because i'm recording on the actual phone but once you say her name apple um, it'll download that nike adapt app uh, and the second thing it's going to do is going to try to sync the actual shoe to the actual app. Uh, the third you want, thing you want to do is, um, like a, I think it's a fitting. So it's like an automatic fitting. So think of yourself in a doctor's office and you're trying to get your, your blood levels done. And, you know, they wrap that thing around your arm and, you know, they're pressing on that, that button. And as this thing hits my face, they're pressing on that button and it tightens up on your muscles. That's what basically the shoe is doing. It's going to tighten and loosen uh, the tension settings of the Nike Adapt uh, system. So it's adapting to your foot as you're standing up, which is pretty cool. And of course, you have that option to manually change it to a setting that more comfortable for you. So anyway, going back, you can see the fourth one is put it on the charging wireless dock or the station. Um, and I'm going to get to that in a minute because... <laughs> Because I have the Nike Adapt Basketball 2.0s, the software, the hardware is pretty much the same. It just features a, a motor inside the midsole of the shoe that syncs up with the Nike Adapt. So there's no need for me to go into open up this wireless pad and this power cord. That's what's inside this box right here because it's exactly the same hardware. <laughs> it's no different from the Nike Adapt 2.0s. And that's what's, so the power cord is actually in here. Uh, and let me just do this put this right here and we'll do the whole thing and of course i don't know what y'all i don't know what y'all talking about first of all i like this i like this this seeing this for the first time i like it oh uh, i know people are worried about scuff marks and all that stuff listen if you have cocoa butter or lotion this is a little trick right here um if you see any scuffs especially on these shoes you know with the whole leather pad and stuff like that Take this, some lotion, and as I'm going off camera, uh, these soft cottons, right? And just rub around it. And I guarantee you, most of the majority of the scuffs or marks will go away. A little tip from me to you. <clears throat> anyway, so we're looking at these Jordan 11 adapts, and whew, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I know people don't like the fact that, you know, there's no ballistic mesh that's on the top because it's covered by this translucent, I think it's called TPE. So think of um, not necessarily like a, like a thermoplastic. Think of a thermoplastic that overlaps the straps that you see right here on the uppers. Now, it's the same type of thermoplastic that we've seen on the off-whites. And I am here to confirm that that is the case. So here is, put this right here. Here we have the Jordan 11 adapts. You see the material on the top and you see the off-white Jordan 5s. So yes, it, it, at a close look or a comparison, you can see it is exactly the same. So let's just get that out the way. Now, let me put my off-white 5s down here. I like the fact that with the shoe, when you're looking at it, the eye stays, that the design is awesome. Because I'm gonna give you a perfect example. You see these two clips right here? right these clips right here and right here are necessary to keep the string intact so when you're tightening the shoe when you're loosening the shoe 
that's what this is for. You want to keep it intact. You don't want the wires to go freely around the shoe, especially on the tongue, the mesh tongue, or it's just going to be a mess. It's the same type of idea that they did with the Nike Adapt Basketball 2.0s, where the clips were featured on here and here because the added support was on, on the heel. So it's <laughs> I can see where Jordan 11 was Jordan. I can see where Jordan brand was going with this. And of course, you got the leather pad with the foam midsole. Now you don't have the carbon fiber. You don't have that carbon fiber that we normally see or custom seeing on a Jordan 11. And I can understand that because of the whole wireless system. Um, but the one flaw that a lot of people are complaining about, and this is where I'm going to get at momentarily, this is the pad. This pad right here. It is no different, I assure you. Because <laughs> uh, the pack, in terms of the packaging, what's included in the Nike Adapt Jordan 11 box, it's going to be your power brick. It's going to be your USB 2.0 cord, 3.0 um, cord with a USB 2.0 I'm going to see part at the bottom. Um, it's basically made so when you go in here, you plug this in, you got your power, you're good to go. And this goes into the actual charging pad, which I'm going to plug up right now so we can demo this right away. So I'm going to actually plug this up. We'll put this in here. If anybody wants to see what the packaging looked like, I'm pretty sure a lot of people did some reviews on it already. But my main part is, let me just take this out. The main part what I want to do is just show you what's how to fun, how it functions and how to set it up. That's the part where a lot of people may be missing. But the inside of the box does look like this. It does come with the manual, and that same wireless pad that I just showed you is right there. It's the exact same thing. Seth Fowler also pointed out the fact that he was not a fan of where they located the motor, uh, and I'm gonna give you an example. So here's the Nike Adapt 2.0. And here's the Jordan 11 Adapt. Now, when you're looking at this, <laughs> let's see if I can do it this way. You see where the motor is. The motor is kind of centered The in terms of the wireless um, charging card. It's centered on the midsole. It's not really centered on the Jordan 11. So you can see the differences uh, where they located the motor. Uh, and it can be and it can't be a problem. Uh, it just means that when you're charging the pad, when using the charging pad, Nike charging pad that this came as this is definitely wireless is that you have to actually line it up with the circles <clears throat> it's the same circles that you see on the box of the, the Nike adapt Jordan 11 and the Nike adapt basketball 2.0s this has to align with this otherwise the <laughs> the part where actually the machine that is inside the shoe it won't unfortunately read the wireless charge so if you move it over Almost like a phone. Think of your phone where the center of the, or actually the iPhone 12, where it features, I think, the circle on the back of the phone. If it's not lined up, it won't do the wireless charge. And I think I'm hearing some type of alarm in the background. <laughs> Typical day around the Milton Nificent community. Things will get better, I promise you. So with that said and done, uh, I think what I'm going to do, I think we covered everything. Uh, and I'm going to show you the do's and don'ts around this shoe because... It can be a problematic thing if you set it up incorrectly and you won't reap the benefits of the actual Nike 11 Adapt shoe in terms of the shortcuts to use with the iPhone Siri functionality. I'm going to show you some things, some do's and don'ts. But with that said and done, your boy, <coughs> Milton Nevinson, we're going to jump into the next video so we can show you the startup sequence of how to set these bad boys up, these Nike 11 Adapts, um, for the first time. I'm going to show you from start to finish. You should see a video of my phone as I try to sync this up <laughs> to a, a Nike account, same Nike account. And I try to make it and before we even get to that. When you set this Nike Adapt app up, you want the same user login that you use with the Nike app and the I think the sneakers app. I kept everything the same. I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep it 100. I kept it the same because I felt like you want to do it that way to make things easier when you're logging in and logging out accounts, and it's easier to track. So I. <laughs> It all makes sense once I log in and I show you. Uh, so with that said and done, your boy Mona said, I'll be right back. But let's get these bad boys set up so you can see what the process is in order to get the Adapt system featured on the actual Nike Adapt app. And we'll show you from start to finish. All right. So let's go and jump into the Nike Adapt app so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, 
make sure this comes up. So right now it's connected to my Nike Adapt Basketball 1.0s. Um, it is also connected to the Nike Adapt 2.0s, <clears throat> at least not yet. But I set up two accounts, one for each shoe, and we need to add the Air Jordan right here, Air Jordan 11 Adapt app. So let's do this. Let's start this off, and it tells you, you know, hello, for each shoe, press and hold the button to power on. So let's hold this down. Okay, that's powered on. Let's grab this shoe. You can see it turned on. Let's grab this shoe. We're going to turn this on. Okay, this is the left shoe. All right, and we can see that they're both pretty much powered on right now. Uh, and basically, it's just kind of putting this in Bluetooth mode so, you know, the shoe can sync up with the actual app. So I'm going to hit start. And it says hold tight. Now it says hold your phone near the lights of your shoe. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to move this over here. Okay. And then it's going to say pair. We're going to select pair. Okay, you can see it right there. Shoe detected. Boom. That's one. Confirming either light on the shoe to confirm. So I, I think that the process is pretty simple. Uh, <clears throat> let's just confirm by pressing the light. And as you're looking at the record, it's going to sync. And this is the same process as the other shoe. So now it's going to probably tell me to go to the other shoe, uh, this being the right shoe, and now this being the left shoe. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, now it's going to tell me to hold on right here. And it's going to connect. And I'm going to pair this one. And you see that it is connected. Okay, you can see right there it's connected. This is pretty simple, right? So it says shoot detected. Select either or light to confirm, which is what we're doing. Uh, and now as we're looking at the left side of the screen, I believe, you should be seeing my phone. All right, now it says now let's dial in to the fit. So... This is the shoe right here, so we're going to hit next. Now it says put the shoes on. The thing that's dope about this, honestly, guys, is the fact that, let me just take this off, the shoe tree right here, it's finally the plastic one. Now, I'm guessing for $500, it makes sense to actually have a shoe tree that is plastic versus paper, which we got with the Nike 11 uh, 25th anniversary or Jubilee. So what I'm going to do is basically just take the shoe trees out right here, and I have to... As you see on the screen, I have to put these on. And this is the part where I was talking about where you got to put these on and it's going to adapt to your foot. So let me just put this on. Here's the first one. And let me just put these bad boys on right here. See, I'm trying to give you the different experience so you can see what it's like from start to finish. All right, so I'm going to stand up and boom, boom. All right, and I'm going to hit begin. And it's going to adapt to my feet. Okay. See how tight it goes? It goes to extremely tight to loose, right? And it says it's going to find your perfect setting um, and based off the, my stance on how I'm standing. So I got the left side, I got the right side. I'm going to just move this up to 45. Saved lock mode in. Now, <laughs> it says creating chill mode. So this is a different setting. So what it does, it typically fix the, the settings of the shoe so that it's the most comfortable portion or <laughs> in terms of how it's sitting uh, on the shoe itself so you might be say you want it tighter just because you're playing basketball you don't want your shoes flying off um, you can move this up right here left and right and of course you must say hey, allow Nike to uh, kind of get the the data information but anyway so we got the left and right and I like the fact that it, it shows the Jordan logo at the top so let's go by the gear at the top right so you can see what else to do See, it does require a software update. Um, I think each shoe, if I'm not mistaken, let me just put this down right here. I think each shoe requires a software update. And the reason why I had to do a software update for the Nike Basketball Adapt 1.0s and the 2.0s. 
So I'm going to update both shoes. And for, for anybody wondering what you have to do, uh, you're probably reading it on the screen right here. Make sure it's at least 50% and make sure your shoes are connected uh, and keep your phone close. So I'm going to hit begin install. And what I'm going to do is just cut the screen right here because you have to update both the left shoe and the right shoe, which kind of sucks <laughs> individually. Um, and then I'm going to show you what the rest of the process is. And we're going to go through the Nike Adapt app and go from there. All right. So we are back. Now, update took about five, ten minutes. It wasn't that long. But now let's just go back and I'm going to show you the rest of the steps that are necessary. Because in addition to this update, there was quite a few things that happened. It's a lot going on. So let's just go back to the main screen. You can see right here that I have about, let me just hold this down. 39% on the right side, 35% on the left side in terms of battery charge. Um, and right now you can see as I'm pressing the different lights and how I can change. Now, that's what the update was literally about. Because if I hold this down in terms of the lights, you can see where it says introducing dual colors, swipe left, or, you know, for the team inspired colorway. So, you know, think of your basketball uh, favorite colors and I'm a Sixers fan, so, if I swipe left, I'm going to do red and blue. And you can see that is red on this, which is the left side, and then blue on the right side. Um, there's different types of things you can do when you do the light effects. So that's what happens when you press these new effects. That, that's right here. I'm going to hit got it. I'm going to press this again. Um, and then I can hit pulsing. And you're going to see that it's going to pulse inside and out. So let me just tap that real quick. And you see that it's pulsing on both shoes, red and blue for my Sixers colors, right? So that's a pretty cool effect. And then you have the other effect is called strobe, where you're going to see it just strobe back and forth. And honestly, that looks like police lights. <laughs> and then going down to gradient, where it's just going back and forth, like, um, I want to say like Knight Rider type, type of style. Uh, but then you also have the duration of how you want this to run. You want it to run for 60 minutes, 30 minutes, or 5 minutes. And of course, the more you run it, the faster your battery is going to charge. So let's get done real quick. Uh, and I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to exit out right here again. Uh, and this is what I was talking about. So if I go to the actual top left, now you see that it's connected to my Jordan 11 Adapts. Uh, it's not going to be connected to the Nike Adapt Basketball 2.0s or the 1.0s because it can only connect. It's one phone. It's going to have three different accounts or three different shoes, but it connects one shoe at a time. So if I wanted to connect to the Nike Adapt Basketball 2.0s, I simply press that and it'll connect to that. But for right now, since this is the Jordan 11 Adapt Series, I'm going to show you the full effect of this sh shoe, <laughs> I should say. So... And of course, you've seen people do the whole lacing mechanism. So when I tighten the left shoe, I think this is what this is. And you see how it's using those anchors that I was talking about to tighten the shoe. Without this, this wire that people are worried about. And actually, keep in mind, when you see in this wire, this is not a thin wire that's going to be easily snapped. This is the same material that they would use for parachuting. So if you're a parachuter, you jump out of plane, you're, all that body weight that's holding you up is literally this string. The only time it's going to be ineffective is somebody takes some scissors and, and kind of go through them. But hopefully you don't you know, piss off your spouse or something like that. That <laughs> causes some issues. So, of course, when I loosen it, that's what it looks like. And you can see how the motor is basically operating at the bottom, loosening the wires. Now, here's the key thing. This is why I wanted to show you. I'm an Apple user. Let's talk uh, about the series shortcuts. Now, <clears throat> in the beginning of the video, I showed you basically what I did, which was the command I ran was, you know, I can't say her name without messing up this video, but <laughs> I'm going to point to it uh, at the top where it says series shortcuts. But the command was loosen my shoes. And what that does, it loosen, it literally loosens your shoes to the lowest um setting of the shoe so you can just pop your foot right out which is pretty cool and how it works is if you want these shortcuts to be added on to the siri functionality you simply press change my lights um, and then i already have this all in here <clears throat> but you would go one by one and you have to add every single one of them all the commands that you want siri to learn so that when you say it she does the command here's where the problem i ran into so let me just jump out of here real quick and show you exactly what i'm talking about this app right here is where it's storing the command. So you can see where it says, go to you know the preset mode. Um, you can secure the, 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 the shoe. You can loosen the shoe, the lights, and stuff like that. 
This is where you're going to find the commands. This is how you know it's going to work. Without this app, without this app right here, the Shortcuts app, if that's not on your phone, this will not work. I had this problem. I ran into it. I was trying to figure out why this wasn't working because when I went in here, it said add the shortcut to Siri. And I sat here for a good 15 minutes trying to figure out why it wasn't working. It's because I needed the shortcut app, which was somehow removed from my phone, um, which has that functionality to show it there. Uh, and therefore, everything will be working. So when you say things like, let me just point this out right here. Not sure if it's going to work right away, but let me just try it anyway. Hey, Siri. Ah, you know why? I'm screen recording, so it's not going to work. <laughs> Durr, come on, Milton. But anyway, I'm going to show that example because we're going to jump to the, um, the, the kind of the ending of this video. It's kind of long, but I wanted to go through it thoroughly from start to finish and what it takes uh, what are the features of the Nike Adapt? Why it costs five hundred dollars? Um, what you're paying for, basically. All right. So we are at the home stretch of this video, and man, this was long and, and <laughs> so tedious. But I wanted to show you what you were getting yourself into if you were deciding to buying a Jordan Eleven Nike Adapt shoe for five hundred dollars, and some of the things that you can and cannot do with the app. Now, I forgot to mention to you guys: <clears throat> if you have the the iPhone or the iWatch. There's a Nike Adapt app in which I'll, you probably see a demo right here um, on the actual watch. So you can also loosen and tighten your shoes through your watch as well. You can use Siri functionality to say, hey, tighten my shoes, loosen my shoes, change the light, strobe lights on there, turn the lights on, turn the lights off, et cetera, et cetera. And then whatever presets you do, because you can have different types of presets on the shoe to make it tighten. Uh, let's just say you have a preset called basketball and it'll tighten it to um, a fit that's comfortable for you. So when you're playing basketball, you, you know, you're good to go. If you're going to go for a walk, you want to have a different preset because you're not doing as much physical work, at least on your foot, when you're going outside and doing what you're doing. So you want a comfortable setting there. It's different type of settings that you can do. It's a very cool, unique design. And it's probably even better for people that are, you know, old, maybe disabled, and they just want to slip into the shoe. Not to say that they would pay $500 for an Adapt shoe, but the, the Adapt technology in general. I think it's a dope thing. I know people are going to flex with this. So anybody that has this, consider yourself lucky because, like I said, these shoes have to pass FCC regulations. So it's not just about the, the material and, and replicating the material. And I'm talking about the people that like to replicate shoes. But this has the technology as well with it. So it has to have communication between the shoe and the application, the Nike app. And that's why I was saying it has to issue. I think Nike Adapt Shoe has an FCC tag on there. That's the picture that I'm showing you right here. Um, and without that, <clears throat> you know, it, you, you could run into a lot of problems. So this is not the shoe. Like I said, these are the shoes that you do want to replicate because it's going to be damn near impossible. I can't believe I curse, but <laughs> it's going to be impossible to um, replicate and get away with it. I, I'm sorry, it's too many caveats to it. You got the, the charging pad, you got the wiring, the, the power brick, the motors and each shoe, they have to sync together. Each shoe has Bluetooth functionality, so it's gonna have communication between the motor and the app. Your boy Bonificent, let's join the, let's join, let's jump to the, <laughs> to the on feed. Uh, because I mean, again, this was a lot to process and I hope that people embrace the idea of the adapt shoe in, in general um, a lot of people kind of steer away from it because of the price point and i understand that but eventually i don't feel like that this is the last time we'll see an adapt on a jordan 11 i feel like the next jordan 11 will feature um a different colorway but i don't think it's going to resemble something similar to like i said earlier in terms of like a jordan 11 bread colorway or a concord because i don't think that they want to associate the nike adapt technology to a shoe that we're accustomed to seeing in terms of the colorway the silhouette which is fine the jordan 11 but the actual colorway the second version may be something different maybe they do it on a jordan 11 low that's a possibility and the reason why i say jordan 11 low nike adapt basketball 2.0s nike adapt basketball 1.0 is considered a low so maybe they might go the same direction the same with the colorway or a different colorway but, you know, I could foresee Jordan brand doing something like that. But your boy, Mona said, let's do that on feed. Jordan 11, Nike Adapt. You can see that I think I have the settings on pulse, pulsing, if I'm mistaken, or it's not strobe. It's definitely on, maybe it's gradient. <laughs> the last lighting effect or whatever. Anyway, your boy, Mona said, hope you guys enjoyed that from start to finish. Jordan 11, Nike Adapt is on deck. Let's put these bad boys on feet so you can see what it looks like.
And you guys, stay blessed.